<laughs> well, now we have uh, uh, Daniel Kelly. Are you there? Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Please. Okay. Uh, so first of all, Peter, thank you for inviting me to the group. And uh, hopefully you can see, you can see my screen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the question Peter asked me was why fourth and why green array chips? So it will be, uh, well, a little bit of personal history, if I may say, but uh, it's for 10 minutes. So hopefully you will bear with me. So everything, oops, yeah. A uh, little bit of introduction. I live in the Czech Republic. My education is in chemistry and mostly I worked and I still work for pharma industry. So electronics and programming is just my hobby. There are great advantages to be only hobbyist, as you will see. So by fourth, everything started in 1984. I was a kid and I was attending electronics club. And there I've seen first time in my life, this computer, that's a Czechoslovak computer SAPI one. It was based on uh, a clone of Intel 8080, modular computer with a backplane bus. And uh, well, it was miraculous for me. Uh, I was not completely, it was not new for electronics. My, my father is actually a hobbyist as well. And he was a su subscriber to this uh, magazine. That was a Czech magazine for hobby electronics, mostly about analog stuff. But from the beginning uh, of eighties, they started to put a supplement dedicated to microelectronics and microcomputers. And uh, incidentally, in 84, this July issue included the first of a series of articles about fourth programming language. So that was actually the first language I've seen. And I learned it from these articles, but I didn't have computer. <laughs> uh, three, or three years later, I've been already in high school. And since even it, it was uh, chemistry, what I studied, uh, electronics was my hobby at that time. And I tried to buy some books and mind you, Czechoslovakia was a communist country at that time still. So these are two books in Czech I could find uh, on, on the Czech market about microprocessors and microcomputers. And the one in English, uh, I got an aunt living in Canada and she sent me this book. So I didn't speak English at that time, but it was interesting to have the book anyway. Mm -hmm. What was better is that thanks to my aunt, I also got my first computer. And there was Timex 2040A, which is clone of uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrum. So I become Spectrist. And the best of all, I could run Figforth on that computer. Unfortunately, I had no documentation. So what I did, I completely disassembled Figforth to understand how it works. So these were my beginnings. In 93, we, it was after revolution in this country and I've been already in the university and that was first time I got access to internet and suddenly I felt great because I could read all those excellent books about fourth and magazines and really to, to learn about fourth. So this was good time. And also I could get access to compilers for PC so I tried many of them. F83 is my favorite and, and frankly, it, it runs under DOS, but I still use it for my projects. About 10 years later, uh, I made my first workshop at home and I started to play with microcontrollers from Atmel and Freescale. And I also designed my own uh, fourth systems. And what was very influential was a series of articles probably everybody knows from Brad Rodriguez, Moving Forth, now available also as a book. And I did all this stuff to, to play a little bit with the robotics. So this is my first mobile robot I, I made. It doesn't exist anymore. 
but I still like robotics and there are several robots in, in different stages of progress. Uh, a little bit later, I started my lifelong project and that's a retro computer based on original Motorola 6809 processor. Uh, actually, these, these components, they are from old computers and instruments. So I buy them on eBay, eBay and, and then I really use them. So this is the first board with CPU and memories and, and stuff like that. And I also wrote an um, fourth that is inspired by F83 and Camo Force from Brad Rodriguez. And the chassis you see on the picture, this is actually the real chassis from the SAPI-1 computer from the first one I've, I've ever seen. And I use this chassis to place boards inside. So I do those uh, uh, boards myself and well, you see it's 10 years and I, I only have one board, so it takes time. So why I use fourth? Well, it was love at first sight, definitely. And uh, probably for that reason, it comes as the most natural language for me. Even if I, I, I learned other languages like C, C++ and Pascal and whatever, uh, this one is really the best I, I can use. As I said, as a hobbyist, I can choose fourth. Uh, because most of you who do it programming professionally, you know that uh, usually say I, I work in C, C++, but I use fourth for my projects or, or uh, to think in, in fourth like style, but I'm not really forced to, to use other language. So that's really the reason. Um, you all know these arguments, it's interactive, flexible, gives total control. That's why I like it so much and it's fun. Definitely. So now the second question, how does Green Arrays fit in that history? So from the time I, I could get to the internet, I was following Chuck's projects, not very often, but I, I really did. And I was completely confused by Colorforth. I tried, but didn't, couldn't use it. I was bewildered by multi-computer chips, but it was fascinating. And in 2013, I found Green Array's website. And that was really a turning point because there was a comprehensive documentation. So I could study about the chips and also there was a still is Air Force Institute. So I could learn about how to program those chips. And the most of all, there was this soft sim so even without having the hardware, I could try to run to, to write programs for GA144 and then see how it how it works. And then browsing on the internet, I found this uh, 2011 Fourth Day video with Greg Bailey, and he was proposing excellent thing. He said, "Come to Incline Village for a week or two, program, do uh, an application node, and as as a, a reward, you will get." Uh, if outboard, and that was great. Problem was I couldn't go to the USA <laughs> to do that. So I started to think what to do and I was thinking about a PID controller for uh, motors. Uh, and so I write this software and everything was running well in SoftSim. And I contacted Greg and said, look, would you like this up note? And he said, yeah, that, that's interesting. And I said, I have one problem. I can't run it on hardware because I, I can't really afford to buy $450, uh, dollar, uh, you know, eval board. But if you turn it the other way around, you send me the board, I will do the, the app note. And uh, great thing is he agreed. So the year after we had this application note and also it was how I started to do presentations during fourth day. So the first one was about controlling motors with PID controller and GA144. And the rest is history. The year after, it was about uh, near field communication using GA144. And next year, there was this presentation about digital image processing. And I really learned a lot of stuff doing those things. And 2017 was really excellent year because uh, we were traveling with my wife to the USA for holidays in November, incidentally. And I was able to, to, to attend SVFIG fourth day meeting in person. And I really liked it very much. I did this presentation about echolocation, but I also met all those fantastic people. I knew only 
online or from email. So that was really great time. Uh, next year I did presentation uh, about hardware monitor. That was fun because I really had electrodes uh, attached to my body here in, in, my, in my room and, and my wife was scared what I'm doing, you know, wires everywhere. And I was really measuring my heart rate but the application was mostly about how to measure energy it consumes. So that was uh, focused on that. And last year, maybe you've seen uh, the presentation about how to connect USB keyboard to, to greenery, greenery chips. So why I like green arrays? Well, it's exciting and working with green arrays is very satisfying. I like the idea that you, with green array chips, you factor your problem not only to different words, words like we are used to in fourth, we factor problem into hardware, into different computers. The computers are small and it's kind of reminiscence of old 8-bit computers I, I'm very fond of. So that's also parameter that, that's important for me. They are small and, and uh, simple. And limited resources forces you to look for efficient solutions with this which is also something I, I like very much. That help, yeah, Green Arrays helped me to meet great people. That's a big advantage. And I had a lot of fun with that. So I'd like to finish my short presentation with this quote from Richard Bach, because what I'm still doing, I'm still learning stuff about Green Array chips. I'm doing things with them. And hopefully with my presentation, I'm, I'm teaching others. And when it comes to presentations, I would like to invite you for this year, fourth day, November 21st, where I'm going to, for, uh, to talk about Etherforce revival. Maybe you remember if Etherforce was something Chuck was working on uh, a couple of years ago. And I think it was 2010, 2011, he gave some presentations. So uh, now the, the system is complete and I'm gonna talk about that in, uh, well, month time, something like that. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much, Daniel. That's excellent. And that, that was very interesting, um, the amateur approach. Um, what was your university uh, training, uh, Daniel? Well, my background is chemistry. And more specifically, it's analytical chemistry. Oh, OK. That is quite a world apart. Yeah. <laughs> but he's been in electronics his whole, since, since you were a teenager, into electronics and computers. Yeah, right. Yeah, similar, a bit like similar background. I was interested in computers uh, before I could afford a computer. Just yeah. getting, getting books and reading absolutely everything I could get, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was it. Uh, I had a lot of computers on paper <laughs> only. A lot of schematics, yeah. you know, and, and, and thinking about computers. So with my F slash nine project uh, with this 8-bit computer, I actually, it's like my dreams coming true uh, from childhood. Mm. It's, so th yeah. that's the reason why it doesn't matter. It takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. <laughs> yep. Um, so, when you when you try to use the GA one forty four, and you're solving problems, it's it's quite a uh, a fascinating approach because you have to, like you were saying, factoring the hardware. Um, where does that architecture uh, trip you up in solving a problem, and where does it, um, you know, and where is it a, a benefit in solving? real world problems? Um, well, one thing is that with, with, with the last project with Etherforce, I realized that greenery chips are good for something I would call linear problems. So processing data is a good example. You have some, some data like analog samples, you digitize them, you, you process them, and then you have some output. So it flows. That's really easy because you, you think like, I have to do uh, ADC, then I have to have a uh, filter, then I have to have, you know, whatever. These are modules. With projects like Etherforce, where actually there's not, a f no, no flow of data, it's like 
action of the of the user you type something to the keyboard and it has to react and does some work uh, it's more like spaghetti you know so that that was really a surprise for me but it's feasible so you will see um, next month uh, factoring into hardware actually I, what, what I do I always draw the layout the floor plan and I think in this small um, rectangles and I put different names. I say, okay, this will be ADC. Here I have to average 10 samples. So that will be another node because there are many nodes. You, you have really a lot of real estate you can play with. And then I start write programs for these uh, computers and I slowly see uh, how they work. And sometimes I have to go from one node to two or three nodes because it's, it's too big problem for one node only. So Daniel, this way it, it evolves. Yep. D Daniel, it, it was fantastic. So we, we will you. participate on the fourth meeting from SVFIC and hear your talk. And then you will prepare more uh, talks for the group, for this group, and uh, probably um, uh, uh, lessons, classes. Uh, yeah, if that does interest, yeah, why not? I think I have a lot of material. So yeah, we can think something else. Wonderful. 